everybody, Scott from Aristocop.com here. <laughs> and Seth from SethMarkwood.com. Together, along with you, the three of us, we are Markwood Men's Breakfast Club, and welcome to Tobacco Advent 2019 Day 16. And we are chugging right along, aren't we? That's, that's just amazing. I'm, I'm yeah. really great to be here. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. It has been phenomenal. So this is... Uh, Say we're back together again for a new set of filming, and it has been just delightful seeing all of the comments and the interactions yes. we've had. Um, Video so far. responses, tons. tons. It's been it's been great. So thank you. Please keep it up. Uh, the next couple of weeks. I think that some people actually took the time to read some stuff I put in the description. Oh, there are some things in the description that I never bothered to mention in video. Oh, and I believe that that may have encouraged a few people to do video responses. Oh, really. Maybe, maybe, maybe you should read what's in the doobly doo. Interesting. Uh, I don't. So I, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> but man, is it subtle. So probably you should do it. Yeah, it is. What, All are, right. what are we smoking? Well, let me see. In our cornaments. Oh, man. This word uh, trips me up every single time. Mazirs. Mazirs. Markwood. I hope is this it? letter finds your family well. It is. Enclosed, you will find two satchels of tobacco for the 2019 Advent, one we've set aside for later. Uh, so what we're going to be smoking today is the Mule Town Mix from the 2019 Mule Town Pipe Show in Columbia, Tennessee. It was a pipe show exclusive, and I only managed to get three tins before the end of the show. Had I known how good it was, I would have gotten more. Kindest regards, Bob. Wow. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. All right. So, smells like a Virginia. Now, I almost just tried to <laughs> need to get back into the rhythm of this. I almost just tried to light my pipe with nothing in it. Hmm. All right, so here's our question of the day. What would be the most surprising scientific discovery imaginable? Here's the thing with that question. Let's get let's get back to lawyering the question, shall we? We must. Uh, I will, I will allow it. I mean, if I can imagine it, it wouldn't really be surprising, would it? So it would be something I couldn't imagine. Hmm. Then that would really surprise me. <laughs> like... Okay, like, okay, um... The whole plot of Men in Black is real. There are actually aliens living among us. And uh, we have this whole space force, if you will, that uh, keeps an eye out on... These, uh... <laughs> but the problem is that something that's been imagined, and I've imagined that after seeing that movie, I imagined it while seeing the movie, and so it wouldn't be all that surprising, would it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Still, it would be surprising. I mean, I can think of a lot less surprising things that, that could be true. Like, um, I mean, like, the whole, we live in the Matrix thing, imagined. Yeah. Aliens are real, imagined. I, I read a story back in the, let's see, I was, a, I was in 10th grade, and I was in a class called, um, It was a literature class. I can't remember. Sci-fi. Sci, um, sci, sci it was something in sci-fi literature. Cool. Um, what was that called? Anyway, there was a story, a short story that I read that was about this guy that would uh, kiss his family goodbye every day, get on the train, and start driving into town. And, and he started noticing that there was a certain mile marker on the train where he would get this really odd feeling and um, he finally mentioned it to some of the other travelers on board and they said yes I noticed the same thing I noticed it coming and going from the office we go past this particular spot and then we feel it and uh, then what you come to find out is at some point in the past some aliens came down to earth cut out a section of our planet and took it to their planet 
as basically a, an ant farm. And when they were living in the real world, it was within the ant farm. Whenever they exited the ant farm, they were basically put into some sort of suspended animation. So it was kind of cool. Kind of sort of the Matrix. That's kind of neat. Yeah. Um, so finding out that we live in an ant farm would be surprising. That would be surprising. That would be surprising. Um, I mean, I think that... Again, this is a scientific discovery. Right. Well, I think that when science is able to catch up um, and discover that um, in the not-too-distant future, uh, someone from Earth has, has been taken by aliens to another planet and has become their Champion. Superman... <laughs> their champion you know when science is able to discover that that's something that won't happen for years and years and years because of just how advanced a uh, scenario like that would be well, this um, is a race of people that have learned to master the shopsmith equipment i assume that is that is right that is right um but because of the power of their son um you know there's a, a champion you know it'll be science will be shocked to learn that but it was their green son if i recall correctly i don't yeah sounds right Definitely not the yellow sun. Um, and, uh, you know, when when they find that out, they'll all want to go. All be champions. All right, so for realsies, um, if scientists were to uh, discover that we had some sort of a dormant gene that, when reanimated, would fill in the blank, solve cancer, allow us to fly, change, change us in some way, in a positive way, that would be a spectacular scientific discovery. Um, surprising scientific discovery, though, could be that, yes, the, it zombifies us. I think, all right, so surprising would be that, that um, uh, time paradoxes, the grandparent paradox is actually real. So science discovers that time travel is possible, but that uh, unlike the parallel universe theory, that um, it is impossible to change the past in order to change future events that triggered your changing of the past. That would be pretty cool. So you could go into the past, screw some stuff up, but it doesn't really screw you up. Well, I mean, so th those are those are you know the two primary um, time travel thoughts. One is that one mm -hmm. is that you go up back, and that when Butterfly you change effect. something, it it changes the future. Um, but then the other one, the, the the grandfather paradox, is if you go back and kill your grandfather before he has had your father, then you don't ever exist to go back and kill your grandfather, and so it's it's impossible. Right. Right. So to discover that that is actually real would be interesting. The other one makes more sense. So if you could go back and kill your grandfather, then that, yeah. So it's, it's I, so I would think, you immediately I, disappear and cease to have ever existed? Right. But then does that negate you going back and killing your grandfather? The, the, Which of the parallel universes does Abed have the goatee? Uh, that is the number six. Um, and that's the darkest timeline. Um, the uh, that's evil Abed. Um, yeah, I think uh, the movie The Time Traveler does a great job of showing that because um, in the film, uh, and I'm sure the original H.G. Wells story. I'm not less familiar with that. Um, the scientist's wife dies. He spends his lifetime inventing a time machine to go back and save her. And basically, when she does. Uh, or he, he can't do it. He can't save her. As he saves her from one thing, she immediately dies from something else. Because um, if mm. she had not died, he wouldn't have spent his entire life figuring out time so travel. The, it's a final destiny. Final right. destination. Right. So you, she was going to die. She, she, she had to die yeah. in order for him to figure out time travel to go back and save her. Um, because if their life had been hunky dory, he wouldn't figure out the time travel and couldn't go back and rescue her. Did you ever see the? Really, it was a soap opera, uh, Dark Shadows. Mm -mm. There was a movie made of it a couple years ago that bombed, but there was a uh, it was a TV show that was basically 
a... Um, Isn't that the Adams family, but different? No. Where because you, you had the uh, the matriarch, no, the patriarch of the family was Barnabas Collins, who was a vampire. Right. That's... And the whole premise of the show was he was trying to bring his dead wife back to life. Okay. And so you find that out. And it really, truly was a soap opera. Back where, to afterlife where, or back to life? I think back... I think back to life. Maybe maybe she became a vampire and he was trying to un, un, un vampire right. her. I don't remember because I was a kid and the show would be on and I would watch just bits and pieces of it. And like a real soap opera, if you watch one episode every three months, you got up to speed really fast. Yeah, because the, the movie, had, the movie had Johnny Depp, didn't it? I think so. Yeah. No one saw that. I think so. Yeah. All right, so what about you? What would be a shocking, surprising, scientific discovery? discovery? If that's a tough one, it's got to be scientific, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're looking forward to seeing your answer to that question, and uh, we'll talk again tomorrow. Make it a great day. Thank you for the tobacco. Oh, that's right. Thank you. What do you think of that? I like it. Yeah? Yeah. You? Um, I'm having trouble. Maybe I'm talking too much, keeping it Probably. wet. It's not wet or anything. So no. That's not... No, it's user error. For sure. Ten times out of ten, it's user error. All right, thank you guys. See you tomorrow.